So, Ronnie, where'd you grow up? Um, on the north side of Long Beach originally. What was your family like growing up? My mother had me at 24, so she was a young single parent with five children. Um, I have a great father. He's deceased now, but actually I came up really wholesome and good until my mom lost her house and we moved to the east side. Then things just went south. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Tired on the household. Excuse me? It's hard on the household. Oh, yes, correct. Absolutely. And the kids take the hit. Yes, yes. And so um, basically things start going downhill. Um, like I said, my parents, they were very good to me. I'm the baby of five. I was spoiled. I had everything a poor child could ever imagine to have. You know what I mean? And so... With us moving and life taking a left turn, it made me take a left turn. So I left home at 12, not because my parents were not taking care of me or doing this or that, because they took very good care of me. I left home because um, it was peer pressure from school, children taking my shoes, my jackets. You know, uh, my mother and father, they supplied me with a whole lot of material things. And um, that was a lot of peer pressure. So I just left at the age of 12. And what happened at 12 on the streets? Um, I went to the streets and I knew some older prostitutes and um, they were like in their 30s and 40s and I was a baby in the bunch. And I already knew at a young age what money felt like. My birthday is July the 15th. I never missed a birthday, never in my life because county checks drop on the 15th. <laughs> so you were fast. I always had a birthday. So I always knew what money felt like. Were you a fast little girl? And I, I got to take off these hills. We can't do this one. Were you, were you a fast little girl? Oh yeah. I'm not going to say fast. I was trying to get fast to the money because see, I knew what it was like at home. And like I said, I already felt it. So once I hit the street. You didn't like being poor? No, it wasn't a problem for me to get out and get some money. I caught my first hoe case at 12. <laughs> and my father, he heard the recording and he flipped over the table because my mama said, keep her ass in there. Keep that little heifer up in there. I ain't coming to get her incorrigible ass. Keep her up in there. So my father comes. He rescues me. He's still on my side. I'm lying. That ain't me. That is my voice. So he ends up getting me out or whatever and uh, taking me back home with him. But saying this to say, in terms of my father, my father is the first convict with a life sentence. My father turned 85 last month, and he's deceased now. He's the first convict to ever work for the Department of Corrections doing, doing urine analysis. But he was still for the convicts because he was selling them my brother, which is three years older than me, his clean urine. And then my mom snitched on him. Typical shit, how fat females do. And so, uh, yeah, that's basically about that. Before you get into your story, tell me about those nails. Oh, Mm. How, how do you do anything with those nails? I do a whole lot with them. I can wipe my ass <laughs> if need to be. <laughs> or I can touch big, long, healthy things if need to be. <laughs> I prefer to touch the little ones, though. <laughs> but, yeah, these are just habit forming. I love my nails. And anybody knows me, y'all already know this shit is signature. Yeah, the Ronnie bitch. <laughs> All right, so back to your story. So you get out of you, you you spend a little bit of time in jail at twelve. I only spend a couple of days. But your parents your parents tried to straighten you up. Um, it was no straightening me up because this is what they created. No discipline at home. I'm the baby, so I can fight the older siblings, and they're not going to do shit to me. You know, so I left home thinking I was grown, but the streets taught me something else. But I always knew I can pay myself better than me giving a man money. And eventually that's what came along in my life 
was a man. Only man that I ever paid. And won't happen never again because he ain't got no sense. He's always a man. Yeah. He's always a dude. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I care not to mention his name, but I have two sons by him. Can I say my children's name? Sure. Cordon and Ron Zay. I have two sons by him. And I met this man at 15 years old, pregnant with my oldest son, Chili. His dad is from Cuba. So I meet his dad at 12 years old. I don't stay on the blade that long. This Cuban pedophile person that Castro, remember Castro sent all them Cubas, Cubans from Cuba over here in the early 80s. You remember that. So his dad, my oldest son dad was a big time dope dealer. His name is Julio. And so um, I don't know where he's at, but my son looks just like him and whatever. And so he took, um, he took me underneath his wing and I got off the streets and I got pregnant by him. Long story short, he ended up catching a case for um, selling cocaine. You know, Cubans is good for selling dope. And so he goes to jail or whatever, and I have my son. I'm pregnant with my son. So my brother had a friend, I care not to mention his name. He came over there to the house. So he was talking to me a little bit. So I said, you're a pimp, huh? And he said, yeah, I would take you with me, but you're too young. Eventually, I end up having my son, and I end up linking up with this other man who I now have two children by. And um, he just fed me a whole lot of fairy tales, a whole lot of false lies like his teeth. And uh, he just recently got out of the federal penitentiary because not only did he explore me at that young age. See, when he got me, I was already turned out. A nigga ain't turned shit out. I turned my own fucking self out. I was going up the alley to Mr. Nick's. May he rest in peace. Old man Nick. Everybody know old man Nick from uh, Long Beach. Old man Nick. And I was busting little dates with him on the fucking first. Getting me like $175. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't turn me out. He turned me on to some things that I shouldn't even put myself through. And so basically it was just a waste. And he went to jail for human trafficking, pimping and pandering. And um, I also have paperwork to back what I'm saying. Like I said, I don't want to say no names, but these young girls were 17 years old that he explored it. Just like he did me when I was 15. I don't care if I was already out there catching cases. I was still a minor and you were my brother's friend. So in the midst of it, my brother and them, they tie this man up. They're, they got him naked. They tie him up. They're getting ready to do something to him. But only reason why they didn't do nothing to him, because they figured I was going to tell. At that time, I probably would have. Now I wouldn't, but yeah. Do you want to mention that this is somebody that's, that I've interviewed that's on my channel? Uh, you did interview this person. You have interviewed this person. And my thing is, I'm speaking in terms of awareness because here's the thing people try to make the whole life so glamorous but really it's a hard ass life because I retired from off of the blade on western in the 50s I never worked Figueroa a day in my life so y'all need to get the fuck up out of here with that shit I'm gonna tell you the dangers and the regrets that this life carry and I told my pastor this my pastor he's a pimp also and he goes to the same church as me and my children father go to. We sing in the same choir. I'm not in that church anymore because I live in the mountains. But I'm going to tell you what, what people don't tell you about this longevity game that haunts you. And I told my pastor this. I can lay in a bed and I can be asleep and I can feel these male incubus, demonic spirits, sexual spirits coming to me having sex to, with me in my sleep because this is what I attracted out there in the streets, living that dark life, sleeping with you, sleeping with you, sleeping with you. So I have all these demonic sexual spirits that's bottled up in one and they come and they have sex with me. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what happens. That's what happens. Doing when you're out there prostituting, you attract sexual demons. It's just like now. I have a man. I think he's my man. I don't know. But if not, fuck it. Go. I don't give a fuck. 
once me and him get into it, and I'm used to running my own shit, it's like, okay, get your shit, go. See, he's going to lay up with another broad. I'm going to try to jump in the nigga's pockets because at the end of the day, don't nothing feel good to me but some money. If you don't have any money, you're not respected. If you don't have no money, you can't take a shit because you can't produce a turd because you can't feed yourself. So at the end of the day, I'm just about money. And what I don't like about my children's father is he promotes my sons to be pimps all on a bitch, man, and this and that. No, I would never promote my daughters to be a hoe. Excuse my language. I suck the dick so you don't have to. Sit your ass behind a desk. Get an education. Get your own money. And that's the only thing I have a problem with his game. But then again, he went to the feds for 10 years for fucking on two little young prostitutes, 17 years old. Had her name tattooed. I got, I got it in my phone. I can back whatever I say. And then he had me at 15. You know, he's just a loser. My son running around here, no teeth in his mouth. I mean, come on. That's the first thing a person look in your, is in your mouth and at your feet, you know? So, yeah, he just has my kids just going in all the wrong directions. He just ain't shit. How many years were you in the game? Or are you still in the game? Um, I wouldn't say I'm in the game like that. I'm in a game when it's pressure. When it's pressure because... I'm so wrapped up into me. I am so wrapped up into Etoya, it's very selfish. So if I have a man, and like I say, me and my man is off, I'm going to get some money. I'm 51 years old. I'm not a bad looking woman. You're great looking Considering woman. the shit that I've been through. So, you know, I just, hey, I take it as it come. That's it. I know how to cook, I can clean. I sell plates, sell me perhaps sometime, you know what I'm saying? But far as me, oh, I need a nigga laying in my bed. Nah, fuck all that. Nah, no, no. I'm strictly about the money. What, what, what have you learned about men? What have I learned about men? From these decades of, of this? Um, You have to be self-preservation. That's the only way a man is going to respect you if you're self-preservation. Just like me. My whole family says, and, and you know, men that I have been with, you're bossy, you want to run shit. How was I running shit when I was giving you my fucking money? How am I running shit when you ain't even got a fucking place to stay? But the shit is on my, in my name. And if I don't pay it, I'm the bitch that's getting the eviction. So what I learned about men, it's just self-preservation. You have to be more often to you than you are them. Because my kid's dad, he never taught me nothing. Every time we got some money, he was gluing in fake tracks of fake hair, trying to be like, you know, Uncle Pimp Snake. You know what I'm saying? You know, as he say, the Hollywood division, nah, that's Long Beach. Ain't no damn division. Ain't nobody in no feds. What the fuck? I'm from Long Beach division. No, I'm from the north side of Long Beach. That's how the fuck you say it. But, yeah, I just do me. That's it. Because at the end of the day, if it ain't about no money... Fuck it, because I'm not going to starve with no nigga, and I'm not going to struggle with no nigga. True fucking story right here. My nigga in jail, Anthony, we end up getting into it at church because the whole church that we go to, Pastor Linwood Young Church, Pastor Linwood used to be a, a pimp himself. He's like a brother to me. So my dude feels threatened because I know all these pimps and prostitutes. That's all the church is full of is pimps and hoes. And I loved it because the church taught me something. It, you know what I mean? And um, I was doing shit at church that I wasn't supposed to be doing. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Baby, if you in some pain, hit me up. <laughs> shit, because I don't take the shit. <laughs> so anyway, uh, me and my dude got into it. So I'm always carrying around bear mace. So we got into it. So he startled me. So I end up macing him in church. And I had everybody flying in the parking lot. So at our church, they think I'm kind of crazy. But nigga, don't disrespect me. Can I say nigga? I'm black. I'm just mixed. But yeah, so... You know, even my kid's dad, he was there at church. When he sees me, he backs up because he doesn't want any part of me. And I don't have respect for no man 
that has to pimp on a young girl. He's, I was 15, he was 25. See, he couldn't handle a real mature woman, you know, and that's my whole conversation every day. It's about some hoeing and it's about some money. I just put my son out, 35 years old, just got out the penitentiary. And the reason why I put him out is because you spend a night at your friend's house and you jump out of her bed, but then you got to come home. Oh, mama, mama, uh, I need some gas money to get to my parole officer in Lancaster. Like, nigga, you should establish that before you jumped in the bed with the broad. So I got sick of that shit. So I threw that motherfucker out. The bitch playing with you. That hoe ain't gonna play with me. So he tells my mother, my mama mad because I won't be a hoe like she used to be. I told my mama, check this out. Ain't no way in hell you could be 35 years old trying to be an up and coming hoe. If you wasn't 13 doing it, it's not gonna work at 35. So as the shit goes by, he's seen everything I'm talking about. See, when you're hoeing, it's a misdemeanor. When you rob a motherfucker, it's a felony. And that's what the fuck he did. He robbed that girl, stole her car, took her credit card, took her money, broke on that bitch like a downtown tramp. I said, oh, but you saying that you didn't want to be a hoe. At least if you was a hoe, it's a misdemeanor case, nigga. You done fucked around and caught a whole motherfucking felony. <laughs> That's that square shit. And my son is handsome as hell. But, yeah, I threw that nigga out because I'm not taking care of no grown-ass nigga. I pay $14.50 by myself, and all I get is my SSI check. And shout-out to my little brother, Prosperity Rose. And I love you, too, Lake, the great nephew. Keep getting your money. You know what I'm saying? 15 toes down all across the town. Yeah, prosperity rose again. Come to steal your toes again. Had to get that in there to my little brother. <laughs> nice plug. Nice plug. Um, I let me ask you a simple question. Does it, you've, you've had a lot of experience in the game? Do you do you see? Have you ever seen anyone make money, get rich in the game? Um, I could say quite a few people that. I have seen one of them is my little brother, Prosperity Rose. Uh, he had his bra working on a blade for like eight or nine months. Now she's uh, a secretary at Century 21. So she's, you know, taking up some kind of courses for property management and things of that nature. So he has took her from concrete and blew this bitch straight up. So if I can turn back the hands of time and my little brother is 33, Prosperity Rose, I would have teamed up with the nigga. I mean, I asked him for vice right today, just like he asks me for safety measures with his hoes, you know, in terms of how do they get in the car, what happens if a trick is driving fast, what do they do? Bitch, take that motherfucking car and throw that bitch in park. The car ain't even got time enough to think. It's going to go, Err! and that's your time to bail out, you know? When the trick pull up, oh, get in. Don't grab the thing from the outside. Slip, roll down the window, baby. Put your hand in there and open it up to make sure you can get your ass out. So mm. he's taught me things and I have taught him things. But, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 I have, I've seen some successful, uh, you know, some successful pimps. Good for yeah, Lake the Great. He's doing very well for himself. Very well. That's my little brother's. His partner, that's his pimp partner. It's cause, so. It's because the, the, the late Kenny Red said that ain't nobody ever got rich in the game. Well, you got to look at, look at Bishop. I mean, he went from pimping on the corner to pimping in the church. No disrespect, Bishop. You just breaking on them hoes on Sunday. I would love to come to your church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it is what it is. Were, were, were drugs ever a part of your life? Um, I dibbled and I dabbled. I dibbled and I dabbled. I mean, being out there, you know, in that type of world, jumping in cars with strange motherfuckers, meeting these niggas that only want to put your foot on your neck, a nigga going to slide you some shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I can't blame me dibbling and dabbling in drugs on a nigga. Whatever I did, I did it because I did it. I did it because I did it. Because I only paid one nigga, and that's my kid's dad. I only paid one nigga, and that was him. And that right there, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's full of dope. You know what I'm saying? Catching cases with minors and shit like that. Don't nobody respect that shit at all. So, 
Yeah, drugs play a big old part. But, um, you know, I never could do a lot of dope. <laughs> I would tell you that. I drink three shots. I'm loaded. So, you know, I like too many material things. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't going to lie like, oh, I ain't never hit the sherm. Oh, I ain't never snorted no yada. Oh, I ain't never took a piece of crack and put it through the fucking foil. Yeah, but after you do it for a couple of more times, the shit makes you sick and makes you nauseated. So you can't go on. So that's been my problem my whole life. Drugs make me nauseated so I never can go green, 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 green. I can smoke weed all day long. I was on the most expensive drug in the world, permethazine with codeine. My habit was $250 a day just to buy one bottle. So who you think I'm choosing up with, this nigga or the bottle? You know the dope always win. I'm choosing up with the bottle. You know what I'm saying? I got some shit, but I can't show you because... <laughs> It's going to go bad for us. But, uh, yeah, you know, I just do me. You know was, what I'm saying? Was it easier when you were a teenager, 20s, 30s, 40s? What what, what age is um, best in this game? In my 20s, I went to the penitentiary because I stabbed up this bra from Long Beach Insane. Her name, Kiki Brown. And me and the bra got into it behind a trick. So the trick dropped me off at the highway center on PCH. And so the broad, you know, she talking shit, I'm talking shit, so she mixes me. That means whip my ass. Bitch put Bigfoot on my ass. <laughs> so long story short, I said, when I see this bitch again, I'm going to fuck her up. So I already premeditated what I was going to do. So when I seen her, I stabbed her up eight times. And they sent me to the penitentiary. I don't know. I always could just but, get but some when you, money. When you were a teenager, was it easier to make money? Well, no, because I didn't know what I knew today. And right now I'm older, so the money doesn't come to me like that. Like I can't come off like, hey, you want a date? No. I have to be in the grocery store and I'll see. And, and see, I'm very choicey. I'm very choicey. I have penis sizes. I have colors. You know, just all kinds of stuff. Like where I live at now in the mountains, I have to date these Caucasian men with long-ass Ku Klux Klan beards down to here, looking like the grand wizards of the Ku Klux Klans. And they pay me and everything is good. So basically, I mean, since I'm older, it's harder. But, I mean, it is what it is at the end of the day. You're just not going to be up in my face and not give me shit. What, what do you prefer? What, uh, white? Men, uh, black men, Mexican, Asian? Um, um, you know, it's it's from off the concrete with the game. You know, as the isms made up, we are not, and I'm considered as a duck because I'm dark skin. So they would call me as a, a duck. So we're not allowed to date black men because that's considered as a threat. Mm. You know, so what's easier, what's easier is a Caucasian man. Oh, and don't get a little dick Asian. You really good. <laughs> it's so easy to pacify because they're not very nasty and they don't want as much. They got these little dicks. So they're just easy. They're very easy. You know, but, um, oh, that's where we left off at. For instance, if I'm in a grocery store and I see a guy because I'm going to look what's in your basket. See, if I drink... $6 organic milk that stays good for three months. I'm not getting ready to talk to you if you got some Kroger milk in your basket or you got some generic ass 99 cent eggs and some generic ass sugar. Hell no. Hell no. I put good shit in my body. So when I'm in a grocery store, I just look in the man's basket and know whether to hit on this man or not. Because I'm going off of what he's putting in his side, his body. He doesn't have Kroger water. This man has alkaline water. This man ain't got Crisco grease. This man has olive oil oil. And we all know that that's way more expensive. So once I see the good items in the basket, I'm like, oh, that's a good catch. And I'll just compliment. The hair is gray. Oh, my Lord, I just love your silver. That is so amazing. You are just so handsome. Men are easy, aren't they? Yeah, and then he might have a sling. I'll just ask him like, hey, how are you? What happened? And he'll be like, oh, I just had surgery. 
and da 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 this da 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 that and then I'll lie and say that I had surgery too because I'm really trying to seek what kind of pain medicine that they gave them. So I'm going to go into the game like I take pain medicine, but I'm going to really take the shit and sell a number 10 Norco for $19. So, you know, it's various ways to get a date. You just don't come off just selling yourself. You have to come off with an offering. I cook. I clean. Show some pretty videos of your beautiful kitchen and all your nice you know, dishes that you prepared, and that draws you up in his house. And after that, you just take it easy. You make every man that you encounter with your boyfriend and how you keep a nigga from off your doorstep. When you meet these men, they'll be like, oh, well, where do you live? Well, honey, I live with my aunt and my four cousins. So therefore, I'm already letting you know I don't have my own shit, so my finances is fucked up, which I live by myself. So that keeps a nigga from off your doorstep because you live with somebody. And people don't like strangers coming to their house, so anything they need to do, they know they got to rent a room. You don't need to know where I live. All you need to know is I'm in need. I ain't even got my own shit. You feel me? So they going to give you some donations. You know, and that's just how I work my shit. Men, men like to help. Damsels in distress, right? Men like to help women that's basically helping themselves. If you step in my house, you're going to look, whether it's just a two-bedroom, and I live by myself, you're going to look like, damn, this lady has some kind of class about herself. But if you go in the broad's house up the street at the projects, couch all fucked up, pillows all nasty and dirty, bitch got a raggedy air mattress up in there, you already know. You could buy a bottle of liquor and smoke two blunts and you can move this bitch. With me, motherfucker, you already know. You got to come with something. Matter of fact, don't even give me the motherfucking money. How about paying my car note? How about paying these two bills for me? And then I'm going to reward you because all the time men don't like to give females their money. See, you got the buy me tricks and you got the pay me tricks. It's a big difference. And I learned that shit about 15 years ago. Nigga don't want to put no money in my hand, but he'll buy me A, B, C, and D. You feel what I'm saying? So I just take it as it comes. It's all about the money. Yeah, yeah. And just like my mother would always tell me, you're better off by yourself than with a mate. Because when me and my nigga are off from each other, I have to start all over again gathering up these men to help me. You know what I'm saying? Because I damn sure ain't going to pay no nigga. Straight out. Oh, my damn sinuses. Okay, so what's next? Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So I know y'all enjoying this shit right here, Saucy Me for the record. Are you uh Hello Beach Finest? <laughs> are you are you addicted <laughs> Are you addicted to the the money? Like like can you separate love and money? Basically, like I say, I'm 51, so if it ain't about the books, I could give a fuck about the looks. And the looks come with love. Because see, with love is hate, harm, deceit, jealousy, and all that old other shit. If Tom go home to his wife, he just want me to wax him down real good. And he gonna go lay with his wife and give her a hug at night and think about my black ass while I'm acting like the, you know, the little nigga coon slave. You feel what I'm saying? So I have a man. Yeah, I love him. Would I cry if he left me? Hell no. Nah. I'm trying to jump up in somebody's pockets. And reason why I can't go and get another man is because me and my nigga just broke up. What I look like bringing you to lay up in my bed? I'm trying to jump up on some fucking money. So, you know, I love, but I have a strange type of love. At times, I think I should have been a nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Just like my kid's dad, the pedophile. I care not to mention your name, nigga. I'm going to save you. He had a hoe. We brought the bitch, cute little fluffy white bitch. We brought her from Fresno. So we bring her down here. Long story short, I end up knocking him for the bitch. I had the bitch for eight days. And Pimp Snake from out of Long Beach, you know, that that's a good nigga right there. Snake is some real pimp and he's some real game. 
Snake was laughing about the shit, and then the bitch never came back, like, for nine hours. And I said to myself, Snake didn't knock me for that bitch. And he knocked me, but um, quite a few times I didn't knock my kid's daddy for his bitch. Because here's the thing, nigga. You doing this so same as low vibrational ass pimping. She go out there, get the money, give it to you, and you take her shopping with her money, and she tells you thank you. A bitch want to feel the motherfucking money. So when I was knocking his hoes, I knocked them for two bitches. And I'm young knocking them hoes. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm sending them bitches. I'm sending them. Like I said, I only half-ass paid one nigga. And the nigga was doing me so grimy, I robbed his ass. Put the money in my son Cordon's diaper. And that's how that nigga foot got fucked up. Because me and my sister chased him out the window with butcher knives, a two-story window. That nigga never got shot in his ankle. That shit came from me and my sister. Oh, my dead ass, black ass daddy, Dennis D. Los Red. My viewers are going to figure out who this is. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are, are, are they there, know. Are, are there good pimps out there? We know, um, we, we know they're a bad pimp. Here is my thing. I look at it like this. Don't do shit to a female that you don't want done to your child. Now, what, 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 because my kid's dad, he never taught me. He so, never so, taught so me the answer, shit. So the answer is no. He's used to, well, I'm not going to say that because it is. Like my brother, Prosperity Rose, successful pimp. Take a bitch from low to high note. Bitch ain't even selling no pussy no more. You know what I'm saying? Um, Lake the Great, respected pimp. He gets his money. You know, good nigga. But what you come in the door on, that's what you come in the door on. Long as you do what you need to do here, that's on you at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is, is that um, what us females need and what I learned, what I got out of the game, the little that I learned from my kid's dad is just in terms of staying down. He didn't never teach me stacking abilities and how to maneuver to do this and do that. You know what I mean? So when 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 we have these pimps, the only thing that I got out of it was a motherfucker telling me to stay down. But once I got the staying down, I was good. I didn't need you for shit. We're living in a fucking motel. You know what I mean? Like, we not doing shit. Nigga, we putting cup of noodles in the microwave. You running around here... With a motherfucking fake ass Jerry Curl blowout hair weave, you know? Like one time, me and my kid's dad, we was in Oakland, California, and he knocked a, a bitch. This bitch had a wide ass motherfucking mouth like a motherfucking horse. And my kid's daddy, see, he didn't pimp with the mind, he pimped with his dick. And, that, and that's a big ass fuck. You never can get that shit fucked up. Never can get it fucked up. So he knocks the hoe. We bring the hoe from Fresno down there to Long Beach. And me and him end up getting into it. So that's when I stole his money and put it in my, my son's diaper. And, you know, me and my sister chased him out the two-story window. But saying this to say, every time he has got some new work, he forgot about his old work. And so when I looked at that, like, I'm not getting anywhere with him, people knocking on the motel door telling us to check out, and I'm young, but I got family all up and down Long Beach, so I never had to stay. But we never grew. We never grew. And just like right today, like, nigga, you went to the feds in your 50s for fucking with a fucking 17-year-old. Motherfucker, I got the shit. I put it all on Facebook yesterday, every fucking thing. Like, get the fuck up out of here. I could never turn a trick with a little young boy. You know what I'm saying? I would never tell my daughters, um, you better go and get a date. If anything, I'm going to fuck the pimp off and the trick too. That's my daughter. I did this shit so you don't have to live this life. But I'm telling you, don't be no fool either. Don't get out your boyfriend car Coming in my room talking about, Mama, you got $2 on some pads. Hell nah, bitch. You should have had the best of pads and the best of pussy wipes. If you just got out the car with your nigga. Now, that's what the fuck I promote. That was the last nigga you went to sleep with and the first nigga you woke up with. So have your necessities. That's where my oldest son got it fucked up at. So I love the game. 
I love the game. I respect big pimps that 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 do well and stuff like that. But for me, paying this nigga, paying that, I ain't never been with that shit. I want to feel my own money. When I knock my kid's dad for his two hoes, bitch, you ain't got to give me all the money. Just give me half of the trap. I just want half. See, I had to come with something new. I couldn't use my kid's daddy game. You giving me all the money all on the hoe, break on the bitch, all in the goddamn Delamo, swap me, buying her some generic ass hoe clothes, and this bitch, thank you, daddy. What the fuck you mean, thank you, daddy? The nigga need to be thanking you. I done robbed my kid's daddy about two, three motherfucking times. Nigga up there, bitch, get the fuck on. Yeah, nigga, after I take yo trap, the bitch trap in my motherfucking too, and I'm ready to take a coat hanger ass whooping behind it. So let's go, motherfucker. Is, is robbing the tricks part let's of Let's go, is, huh? ro- is robbing the tricks part of the game? Um, It's a part of the game. It's a part of the game. You would give a game a black eye like one one time, Uh, I think I was about 17, me and my kid's dad, we was in uh, Vegas. So I just learned how to pickpocket. And I used to run with these two hoes named Vera and Coco. They pimp was named Silky from out of Albuquerque. He got a brother named International T. Yeah, so uh, they taught me how to pickpocket. So me and my kid's dad, I knocked my homegirl for him. We went to Vegas and so uh, he put us down. So I run up on a trick, so I pickpocket him. So I didn't have enough sense to peep the money that I was pickpocketing. I just took the all the money out the wallet and stole the watch and got on. So anyway, uh, about time I ran to the motel room and beat on the door, like I came up, I came up. I had about $200 worth of uh, $2 bills. <laughs> <laughs> so, I fucked up. <laughs> so he was mad as hell. He was like, bitch, you done fucked up. You done blew up the track like, nigga, it's whatever. You know, shit, I thought it was all 20s, but they were all $2 bills. So, um, you know, it just, it just, it, it, it varies. And I, I will always, it's the oldest profession in the world. I will always, you know, uplift the game. You know what I mean? Just learn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have fucked with my kid's faggot ass daddy. Because he's a fucking pedophile. He's a loser. He's a loser. Like I said, I don't have a, a track record of paying niggas. Can't no nigga really put up with my bipolar ass? <laughs> Shit, please. My nigga that's in jail right now? Shit. <laughs> I don't be playing that shit. That nigga let you know I maced his ass in church. My kid's dad that went to the feds, he don't fuck with me. Mm-mm, at all. Like, oh, here come this crazy ass little bitch. Yeah, nigga, you already know. But yeah, I would have changed a whole lot of things. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's empowerment for a man to pay you your wealth and your worth. And it's empowerment for a lady to make a man feel the way that he wants to feel. See, a lot of hoes, they, I got pussy and dick instructions straight the fuck out. You're not getting ready to suck on my titties. I'm not getting ready to lay on my motherfucking back and let you hit this fat ass cock. We ain't doing none of that. I'm going to bend the fuck over and I'm going to tell you whatever you need to hear. You know, so I come with a whole lot of instructions because if you turn into trick, seven minutes max, you should be gone. Bitch, what is you doing all the way butt naked? You got your bra off, your T-shirt off, your shorts off. I mean, like, goddamn, so I run a hard fucking bargain. I run a very hard bargain, but I aim to please. I aim to please because you would be surprised what a motherfucker can do when a bitch throw some fucking sound effects on that dick. Eat that motherfucker up. That nigga be like, da 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 Put some sound effects on it. You done. You're done. You're done. Put some sound effects on it. Suck that motherfucker for about three minutes real motherfucking good. Give him some sloppy toppy, eh, gag and all that old shit. And after that, honey, just bend on over and twitch your ass up and some, you done. Seven minutes, you done. <laughs> you done. You can turn the trick while your nigga go to the store. It's over. Come on, grass man. What do you got, Pedro? <laughs> Give me some grass and some dough. Ronnie, Ronnie, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in all these 
years. The most important lesson that I learned um, is to just always be yourself. And if it's not beneficial, like a referee with a whistle, cut it loose. And just don't be no fag. And if you leave your folks, bitch, don't go run to another nigga. Don't go run to another pimp. Because they don't respect that shit. They don't respect it at all. You know, just do you. You know, like, that's the nigga. Mario, he a pimp. From Oakland. Oh, my God. I am so out of pocket, but that motherfucker was fine than a motherfucker. And I don't even like yellow niggas. He had the Shirley Temple curls. So my kid's dad, the one that got out the feds, he put me down and he kept the other bitch down with the wide-ass dick-sucking horse mouth. So when he put me down, I think I made like 1400 So I wanted to get back to Long Beach. We're in Van Nuys on Sepulveda. It's a track. And so um, then it wasn't cell phones. So I seen his pimp partner, Mario, pumping gas. So I had all my money keistered in a condom up my coochie, and I had $150 in my hand. That was my last date that I had, the $150 date, because they was eating my little cute young ass up. I had them motherfucking tricks lined the fuck up. So I walk up to his car, so I put $150 on his seat. So when I put the buck 50 on his seat, he looked and he was like, what's that? And he was like, oh, bitch, you giving me some money you choosing up? And I was like, yeah, I'm choosing up. He is like, 150 ain't enough. I was like, well, I can make more money. I need to get to Long Beach. Now, I'm 17. I'm really giving this pimp the buck 50 to get me from out the Van Nuys to Long Beach. Like, I have to get my kids. And he already knew, like, this is, uh, oops, this is, you know, I didn't say the name. <laughs> this is, you know, who's, uh bottom bitch right here so he was like well you gotta give me some more money it ain't enough so I dipped my hand in his window real quick like let me snatch up my buck 50 cause nigga you're bullshitting so I end up getting a ride from Van Nuys to Long Beach from a trick so that went all around Long Beach it was all in Oakland what I did and I was out of pocket I didn't give a fuck I wanted a ride my kid's daddy was still gonna fuck with me he wasn't about shit anyway Motherfucker couldn't even control when he was smoke crack. Nigga smoke crack, he'd be like. And then standing up on that one ass leg that me and my sister fucked up. Yeah, he's just a waste. And for him to just, you know, feed my kids that that bullshit, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, my sons are grown and they do as they do. Just know, nigga, you ain't laying up on my motherfucking couch because I'm the pimp. I need to get paid, too. <laughs> All right. Ronnie, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're fast. Bye, y'all. You're fascinating. <laughs> thank you.